Hey y'all, it's Sharon and I'm back to share another, you know what? No, I'm not sharing anything, but uh, this opinion of mine of what happened to Mr. Tyree Nichols and the video that I watched. Let me first say that I, I, I'm sending prayers and condolences to his family um, as a retired officer, detective at that. What I saw on the video was just, I don't even have words for it. So, oh boy, um, talk about just being just angry and, and seeing how they treated that man. He was not fighting, you guys. Uh, a lot of times, well, let me just say this, watching the video when they pulled him out the car and he's laying on the ground and they're like, give me your hands. It reminded me of training and going through the training where we we joked about it. We talked about test a lie. When you testify in court and, you know, they tell you to speak loudly. So uh, people, when they canvass the area, the neighbors will will basically defend you and testify for you. Because, yeah, I heard somebody saying, give me your hands, give me your hands. But clearly in that video, you saw that they were using the training the wrong way. Um, hitting him and, and punching him and kicking him. I always tell, I used to tell the recruits, you can't get compliance from somebody punch you in the face and they're sitting there telling you, give me your hands, but you're punching me in my head. You expect me not to protect myself? How am I gonna put my hands behind my back? What I used to do if I did get into a tussle and uh, watching my brother wrestle, I would get on top of him. And if I needed to, I'm gonna hit right by their kidneys. Put your hand back here. Cause now they gotta protect their kidney. I have their hand. But there's, it goes way deeper than that guys. Uh, just being on this elite unit, um, the Scorpion team. I was on a couple of um, specialized units, as they were called in my agency. And uh, we had supervisors. Uh, one of my supervisors, one of the teams I was on, my supervisors, my supervisor went with us everywhere we went. He was out there running with us, running and gunning, as they say. He was out there with us. Um, he wouldn't tell us to do something and not be able to do it himself. I've had supervisors like that. Um, but just seeing the inhumane treatment of this man who wasn't fighting back, you know, he was not fighting back. He was merely trying to protect himself and asking, what what did he do? Um, my understanding, some other officers are under investigation. They need it. Because um, clearly there was, I, I'm not sure about the officer that was, with the baton, but I didn't see him in the five photos of the arrested. So he needs to be got. Um, it's just deeper than that, guys. I talk about it in some of my videos with my experience and whistleblowing and um, what would make an officer not say anything when they see something like this or walk off or not want to be involved. And, and there's so many variables with that. But I still say the police need to be restructured. Um, I'll just leave it at that. The police, the police need to be restructured, and um, it's, I'm, I can't even begin to explain to you how angry it makes me feel to see that happen, man. Um, and if you can't see, there's a problem within policing because this is happening in California. It's happening in uh, Bakersfield. That new, I guess, documentary, if you want to call it, with Colin Kaepernick. That's coming out. It's happening in New York, it's happening in Florida, in Texas. And it's always the same issue, the culture, the mindset, the indoctrination that happens when you get into policing. Remember, I admitted my own bias towards white men about I came into policing with a bias towards white men because of what happened, you know, a gun being pointed at me at 11 years old, it left a stain in my head. And all that, all that happened was I got trained with the bias. So how many other people get trained with their racism, with their bias, with their prejudice, and then put that in the forefront of every decision that they make. And remember, I told you I had to go inside. I had to really look at me, even though I blew the whistle two different times in my career. The second time I had to do like an inside search of me. I had to deal with the way I was thinking, the way I was uh, behaving. So if officers are not doing that, that Policing can be restructured, especially when it comes to hiring individuals and who and what you're hiring and what baggage they carry with them into policing. And then the system within itself, 
I told you um, about fishing. I love fishing. But if my sergeant is coming down on me, where am I going to go fish and get these bodies or produce these arrests or prove that I'm working? Where am I going to go? I equate it to fishing. I'm going to go to the spot that I know I can catch some fish, i.e. high crime, i.e. poor areas. And then I told you about um, going to those areas and taking people out of, that, of the area. It sterilizes it, causes a blight. Because if you take the number one person that's uh, the breadwinner, because now he's drinking in public, so you're going to take him in so your sergeant can get off your back. You just snatched the main breadwinner for our family. What happens to that family? And then we, we ride around these areas talking about, oh my gosh, how can these people live this way? You ever think about that? You ever compassionately put yourself in that place? It, it, it's so many variables on what happened to Mr. Nichols that... It's almost embarrassing to say you're a police officer because it keeps happening. But I said a lot. I'm just giving you my perspective and my experience. Uh, hit like, subscribe, share, comment if you feel like it. And uh, I'll come back next week, hopefully on a better note. Talk to you guys later. And always remember, guys, you don't necessarily have to go through a thing to learn from it. Talk to you later. Bye.